Hello, my name is Quattro Libre. You may have seen me on the YouTube. Debacho! All right, so we need a full skid plate for our Audi. If you ever do anything like this, I highly recommend that you build this car upside down. I'd be interested to know what you guys think will wreck first. I've added so much weight now. Our rims showed up. <laughs> it's time to take it off there with this one. We took a master off of a three quarter ton Silverado, I think. All right, so these are my two intake pipes coming from the turbo. And basically I just took one of these big ends here, flattened it in the press so I could stick two pieces of pipe in there and then just heated up the outside and flared them a little bit. And then that would go right like that. And then that would connect to that one. So we'll tack that up then we'll weld up the, um, the new ears on the turbo because they need to be turned a little bit and uh, I got the other intake piping figured out to go around the diff there and then we'll bolt up the axles properly and the back half is done skid plate time all right so that's the Y kind of finished up there I welded on the inside and on the outside other way this is all steel because they're Ford parts Ford doesn't care about weight savings or um, fuel efficiency or anything like that or longevity of their products so Dodge and the GM use all aluminum intercooling piping but it's nice that Ford work uses steel so that we can work with it it just weighs a ton so unfortunately this is heavy but it's nice to work with I'll weld this onto there um, after I put the ears on the turbos because I kind of want those in place in case I have to tip the intercooler pipe one way or another to line up with the one at the back that only took like four hours to get these sitting right but uh, anyway here we go so basically this is the full skid plate underneath the car there's some more magic i uh, just replacing the wheel bearings there i ordered new ones and then they were the wrong ones so right ones are coming basically just lined up a level front to back and then self-tapped holes in with these little self-tappers and then that marks the hole in the plate and then the runner and then throw these speed nuts in it um, slide them in and then use these nice tapered bolts we'll find the speed nut real nice and um, hold it down good and solid so that takes it'll vibrate make lots of noise scare the shit out of you i don't know how functional it'll be but either way it gives us a place to run all of our lines and our intercooler and our turbos and our pipes and or what other magic stuff there's a lot of stuff going on in there that's a lot of inventory magic so we'll see if it all holds together <laughs> i i hope it doesn't make too much noise because th this will like um unfortunately these these do have the the seams in there we kind of pounded them out um the back piece is brand new so that one will will sit much nicer um we'll probably fold I'll just probably fold this last little lip over, just put a little bend on it, and that'll stiffen up the sides. Uh, we'll take it for a run and see how noisy it gets. Um, but uh, I don't think we'll be able to hear much with the turbos in the back seat anyway, so um, might be interesting to the people outside the car as you drive by, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so for the diffuser, I've got speed nuts that end up in the uh, runner underneath there. That will bolt this down, but I'm still going to PL it and rivet it just because. Um, this one doesn't have a runner underneath it because the fuel tank is in the way, but these ones do. So I'll drill holes for the rivets now, and then that will make a hole in the runner. That way I can drill that hole bigger so the end of the rivet can go through, and then I can still take the diffuser off with... Um, just a couple of uh, 516, some short one speed nut, if you can believe that. Um, but everything else is uh, pretty, pretty awesome. I have a diffuser. Never thought I'd have a car with a diffuser. <laughs> Here we go.
All right, I'm very excited about this. Um, our rims showed up. Now I only ordered two 10 inch wide, five by 112 with a 25 millimeter offset rims, thinking that if they fit on the front, we would order four uh, 10 inch rims all the way around. Um, but thank you very much for your input on uh, experiences and driving all wheel drive cars and whatever. I never considered that putting wider tires on the front and skinnier ones on the back would actually help reduce the understeer because you got more grip on the, you're actually trying to introduce oversteer at the back. So everything's kind of overlapping and everything's kind of happening at the same time. The thing is, we'll probably just order eight inch rims anyway. If these don't fit on the back, on the front, they'll go on the back, which will actually make it handle worse. But um, they are, it is what it is. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. So, um, Freddy has our tires. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's, that's legitimate. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, look at that. I've never bought brand new rims before. I've never gotten new rims. I've always just gone to Kijiji, gotten some rims with clear coat peeling, cleaned them up, polished them. But this is incredible. Anyway, if they fit on the front, we'll leave them on the front. I put the 8 inch on the back. If they don't, we'll put the 10 inch on the back, put the 8 inch on the front. We'll get another bunch of 8-inch rims later. I don't know. Anyway, i got to put these tires on. Ooh. This is from Toronto Tires, who were the only ones that could actually get us rims in time. So with the... Not the weight of the car on there, but we do have full range of motion. With just a tiny bit to spare, we can raise the car up too if we have to. Uh, or basically keep it at this height. Um... As we're uh, as we're driving, whatever needs be, and you're not really full lock at any time anyway. But we'll see. Shouldn't shouldn't rub. I don't know what happened with these wheel bearings, but there's there's play in the wheel bearing. They're replacing all the wheel bearings again. It's weird. Anyway, uh, we're working on it. All right, it's been a lot of fun, uh, and I would never want to do this again without a rotisserie. But I've added so much weight now that uh, she's getting a little sketchy. <laughs> it's time to take it off the rotisserie. Here we go. So this is the back bumper and I really like what they did here up to about there, but I'm not very happy with, with that section, so yeah, we can fix that. That's better. I can work with that. car looks like with wheels on it and the wheels touching the ground <laughs> I love this project I've never felt about any project like I have about this car um, the more I think about it the more this car scares the shit out of me um, I just thinking back to the dyno video when uh, like we're in the dyno room and you just kind of like yeah like you're you don't want to be in the room I think there's a nice clip of Stefan running out of the out of the room but just imagine that Nothing's different. Now you're sitting in the middle of the engine, the turbos are behind you, the engine's in front of you, um, and just a tin wall basically separating you from, from all this madness. But uh, the pictures don't do it justice. 
Uh, there's no, the way I see it, I, I can't get a nice angle of it on camera or, or on the phone. But uh, that just gives you all the more reason to come see it in person at some point. But this car is friggin' awesome. Anyway, I'm going to go inside, grab a bite to eat. I'll probably come back out and mess underneath the hood for a bit. So, here we go. Okay, so we got to cover up this gas cap and the door handles. And I think we're also going to fill that in just because it's annoying for the rat. And um, I have to replace this sunroof. Now this sunroof was mean coming out. You can see it kind of kind of fought me. A couple spot welds that were really annoying. So basically lay the sheet right on top. I'll probably go to this corner right here and just cut it out straight line over here. Um, and we'll use the English wheel there to just put a little curve to it. And we're going to do the same with this gas cap. Now it doesn't it doesn't fit nice. Joel cut this out for me way back in the summer. I don't know whether he used his teeth or not, but uh, that's not going to be very nice to weld unless we work with it. So we'll throw it in the English wheel. We'll put a little bit of a contour to it. And then if it fits nice up against here, then it will fit nice in here and we'll blend in much nicer. So here we go. Much better. So we're done with all our heavy welding, which is the mounts and the cage and things like that. So uh, now we can switch from our 35 thou down to 25 thou wiring. We just don't need all the penetration that we can get with a thicker wire and uh, less chance to burn holes in. Like threading needle. Okay, so basically put this in the English wheel just to put a tiny curve on it. Uh, the front wasn't damaged and it's got this little lip fold on the inside so that'll keep the profile proper on the front. The back here, um, I kind of, like it's, it's a tinny roof so um, I don't know what's going to happen there but the profile's not bad. I got one little bubble there where I, I curled it too much. Uh, you got to be really careful, you don't do too much. I'm gonna weld, just spot weld it in, in places in the middle and on one side that I've cut off on the edge here. With the sheet laying on it, I'll cut both at the exact same time and then that'll give me a perfect line. If I'm, if I'm off just a little bit, it'll fall. It doesn't matter if the, cur if the line is curved or, or whatever, it's still the perfect gap between the roof and the new tin. So here we go. And you thought I didn't have gloves. They were just all the way in the house and I didn't want to walk all the way there. Remember that Simpsons where he's going to go rob a place and he sands off his fingertips? He's like, oh, I could just grab gloves, but they're in the house. Yeah, kind of like that. That's not bad uh, following the contour there. It's up high because it's still, like that's still the roof underneath. That's my seam, my thickness to weld it, butt weld it. And then I have one little spot right here which seems to bubble up, but it's not a little bit of a kink, which isn't the end of the world. It'll either pull this up or this will pull that down. Um, regardless, it's it'll look all right. Because this isn't cut yet, see there's the sun. I'm gonna cut a line straight across, cut both at the same time, and then this line will be absolutely perfect for welding as well. So even though I got a little drunk here and wandered a bit, doesn't matter because I was cutting both steel at the same time. It was just a bunch of spot welding, can't let it get hot because then it'll get a whole bunch of little warping. So you just work your way around. Um, you could, you don't have to go this far even, you can just put a layer of filler over top of that, call it a day. But uh, it only takes like an hour or two longer just to weld it solid. And then um, it looks better from the inside anyway. If it's welded completely solid, rather than a bunch of Bondo falling through, makes drivers a little bit more, if somebody else was gonna get in there, a little more comfortable than knowing it was slapped together. Somebody mentioned on the old Audis that um, they didn't have this roof scoop, but they still had the intercooler and the rad and stuff in the back. 
but they had a they had a an intake that sunk into the roof. I never thought about that before. And then I thought maybe I shouldn't weld the sunroof shut and incorporate something that I could lower it and then have air coming in feeding if it was running hot or if we we're running it outside in the winter or goofing off in the snow, have it so that it popped up and diverted air over the scoop so that it doesn't uh, cool too much. The LSs do actually like to run hot. Not Rob Ferretti hot, but they do like warmer temperatures. So, um, but that's not to say that we can't go to Tuesday and get a nice like hand crank sunroof and um, make it so that if you crank it one way, it would lower and crank it the other way to go up. Maybe put like a window motor on an electric motor somehow on a temperature sensor that, that's able to raise and lower it automatically to keep a very constant temperature. But that's all later. Right now we're just crossing our fingers hoping that this will keep it cool enough for the race. Um, we're going to put a pretty sick wrap on it and then uh, um, hope for the best. Don't have time to start messing around with stuff like that. If I had another six months, absolutely. But uh, I will have six months after the race. So we'll keep playing with this car until we uh, get it perfect. Anyway, here we go. So that's basically what it looks like. And we don't want to see any light poking through. One little spot, right? Two little spots. Not bad. Um, got a little bit of pop can effect going on. Um, we'll see what happens there. But it kinks just like the back of the roof does. Um, it's just, it's a giant, tinny piece of steel. So hopefully it doesn't vibrate like shit. If it does, I'll put a little strip on the bottom, just bend it, and then just glue that on the bottom, and that'll make it a little more rigid. I just want to hear the roof flapping while I'm going. It's annoying. But uh, those will probably stop any noise from reaching my ears at all. <laughs> all right, now this engine is still the coffee table engine. Um, no crankshaft, no pistons. Easy to work with and light. Anyway, we mocked it up. Dang, that is a sexy car. Um, it's pretty late at night. It's one o'clock and it's Christmas Eve's Eve. So I didn't want to do the actual engine in there because I'm going to F it up somehow. <laughs> so we'll just run our lines, start running our, um, the lines that we have to, the exhaust is all done. I just got to weld the flanges on solid now that everything else is hooked up. And we'll start running all our um, power wires and start plumbing it in. So, But for now, um, as tired as I am, I am going to be forced to take a couple days off. And as it should be, it's Christmas. So I'll see if I can figure these uh, this out. See how good the instructions are. And if you don't mix up the instructions for the remote oil filter, it'll be fine. So. All right, alternator relocate. Uh, power steering pump relocate and tensioner relocate. Uh, this is an ICT kit that we got from Summit Racing. Uh, 200 some odd bucks. We'll put the link down below. Uh, it assembled really nice, really easy, simple to follow instructions. Just uh, just like building Legos when you were three years old. Uh, I won't put any exact information on how to put that together. Just that I think it's worth it. Especially since... Um, We'll be running this at like 8,000 RPM, and when you're running at eight grand on stock internals, you're really worried about losing your belt, and you don't want that, so you want it to be lined up perfect. I don't want any grief on hearing, why didn't you make all your own brackets, and why didn't you put your alternator down below, because I'm going to lose a belt at eight, 9,000 RPM. So Anyway, that's it. It is now probably 2 in the morning. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to see, make sure the bumper still fits on. And maybe, maybe, well, oh, I need a new bearing or something in there. Um, and maybe uh, put a little piece of Lexan in there for the um, front pulley. And then maybe we'll put a design on it so you can see it turning through the bumper. That'd be kind of cool. Would you look at that? It fits. Look at that. We got at least, at least an inch there before it hits the grill. At least, and at least a, an inch before the alternator hits the hood, and uh, 
Up top there, we got lots, lots of room. No problem, we can almost put a truck intake in it. <laughs> there we go. Another one of those coolers. So, Stefan suggested I don't put coolers at the very bottom because if I hit anything, I can destroy it, which is 100% true. So, <laughs> so, we're gonna have a transmission cooler and a power steering cooler this big because I don't think we can overcool the transmission or the engine or sorry the power steering. Um, the engine oil we want it to stay the same temperature as the coolant. Now we're only cooling the oil that's coming back from the turbos and not all of the engine, uh, not all of the engine oil. So basically, most 90% of it stays with, within the engine, 10% goes to the turbos and come back to the front, and we're cooling that last 10%. So I think these small coolers will fit over top of this opening here. Um, and, and we just have enough room, our pulleys and that are right, right in the, it's pretty close. So I think if we notch maybe just a little bit into the plastic here, and uh, cut this more straight. Um, I don't think that'll hurt anything. We can beef it up with some fiberglass afterwards. We can lay these in there. And um, so we'll have one here and basically one here. And then two little ones just off in front of that. And then we'll fiberglass this solid. Um, I don't know if you guys have any opinions on that. If there's such a thing as overcooling. Basically the only thing we can really do is drive it pull over, beat on it, and just take temperature gun to see what each one of these lines are doing, what kind of temperatures we're getting on the way out. And we'll probably put a um, transmission uh, temperature gauge in it. Hopefully we got time for that. And then it's as simple as just turning the pump off and we'll stop cooling if we are over cooling the transmission. Um, but I don't think we're gonna be in that type of scenario. The turbos, we have no choice. It will be coming through, and same with the power steering, but I, I don't see it being an issue, so. Unless you guys have some issues with it, let me know. There's nothing different, except now you're in the middle of it with the turbos behind you <laughs> and the engine shit right all around me. <laughs> Are you trying to scare me now from driving it? No, no, I, I think I'm gonna be scared to drive it. Like, there's gonna be so much noise. The scariest thing is when, the first thing to let go. Yeah. Well, that, that, the dyno would be a good test for that. Running lines for the reservoir tank, which we have repositioned instead of in the cab to here, because I said it would work. So I guess Rich believes me, even though I have zero experience. So when Justin, <laughs> so when Justin Bell drives it into the wall at Daytona because the brakes failed, it's clearly Stefan. <laughs> clearly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got insurance for this, right? I think the most important thing, even though, you know, like it's it's a sealed system, so as long as the cap where it will pull air in from is above the master cylinder itself instead of the reservoir, uh, it should work fine, right? Because it's under it's under uh, pressure, so it won't, you know, you just gotta stop it from leaking out. So it's gotta be taller than that. Simple, <laughs> right? So this guy here is just a cheapy tool from uh, Harbor Freight. I had to sneak over and get it because I don't even know if Princess Auto might have it here, but, uh, not 100% sure, but they'll charge probably double for it. So, <laughs> I uh, this guy here is a, to bleed the calipers. So this normally goes on and you stick it on each caliper on each corner and, and, and it pulls a vacuum and sucks the fluid down from the master. But uh, I saw that they also have the ones that you stick on the master cylinder and they're a lot more money and there's a special plate and you gotta do all this. So I just, you can even stick this, just stick it in the end, hold your hand over it and just pull a vacuum right from the master. Sucks most of the air out, like we're still gonna double check it, but uh, we bled the system in like a minute. Like, way easier than doing each uh, caliber individually. Right, right, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without you, Stefan, this would've taken hours. It would've taken years. Well, you would use more brake fluid, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Infomercial shot. <laughs> Don't break it. Yeah, it works. So, um, thinking about the brakes, we got rid of the whole Audi system. Originally, I was gonna try and use it, but it was big and heavy, and it used this bubble thing, and and 
I don't know how it worked. So anyway, we took a master off of a three-quarter ton Silverado, I think, thanks to Tuesday. There's a Hydro Boost unit, so it'll work off the power steering pump. But the problem was that the reservoir stuck out of about this high, and no word of a lie, about that high. So the choices were to either make like a, a new pancake reservoir on top, or to make a remote uh, uh, reservoir. So all we did was take the housing and move it farther back. And then I tried to find rubber hoses that were compatible with DOT3 fluid. And I couldn't really find a definite answer as to which hoses were okay with DOT3 fluid. So we went with half inch aluminum line and just these nut and furrow fittings. Um, they don't really hold much pressure. It's just a matter of getting the fluid into the uh, master. Now this is, this is the, the top of the reservoir is still higher, much higher than the master itself um, and we'll keep that full and so far after we've bled it, it seems to work pretty good so um, yeah that's what we did I was debating on cutting a hole in the hood and then just putting like the fuel pressure gauge and maybe boost on the hood and then I thought ah, that's a lot of work and it looks kind of goofy so instead we tried to keep it nice and clean this will just fit underneath the hood the lines look nice and straight nice and clean they match the you know, camber plates real nice Everything else is going to be hidden um, underneath here. We've got the transmission, cooler pump underneath there, the fuel pressure return, and then there's a nice cover that hides everything. So when you pop the hood, it's just, to anybody that doesn't look in the back seat, it's just a naturally aspirated 327 4.8 that uh, is just, yeah, whatever. It's just another LS swap. So. <laughs> so yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. Thanks a lot for bringing your bleeders, Stefan. Give me a no hand. worries, no worries. And uh, best just... cheapest tool you can buy. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Like, it was so cheap. Yeah, makes I, it way easier. I will definitely go out and buy one because bleeding. I've pumped brake. I don't do brakes that often, so I'm like, ah, just pump pedal, right? It's good exercise. You don't have to go to the gym. <laughs> so update on it is we just got the clutch back, um, and. We put new wheel bearings in, but they still have a little bit of slop. So we bit the bullet and bought original Audi equipment wheel bearings. They're coming in on Wednesday. Um, the clutch is done, so we can, we're going to get the transmission finished welding tomorrow. And this is still the coffee table engine because, no word of a lie, Gary bit on it. And then Gary's fiance said, don't buy it. So he said, ha ha, I want to get married, so I'm not buying your table. And eBay screwed us over and still charged us 86 bucks to list it on eBay and because we don't have an eBay credit we can't list it again so if you want that coffee table which is actually that engine um, just send us an email on debossgarage at gmail.com make an offer and we'll set something up that eBay thing really kind of screwed us over and Gary we did not appreciate that dick um, move, Gary. that was a dick move Gary dick move anyway um, whatever we won't be doing the eBay thing for a while. And, uh, yeah. So, that's where we're at. Uh, so, Wednesday we get it moving under its own power. Thursday we get a wrap on it. Friday we're going to Pennsylvania. Saturday will either be a really good day or a very disappointing day. And then that will be really the... If it holds up on the dyno, it'll hold up together bits and pieces. And then it's a matter of trying to tune it while we're down in Florida, like suspension wise, make sure it's not bunny hopping and whatever else. So we got a shifting, we got brake pedal and wiring. It's all the wiring was already done. So um, yeah, getting there, here we go. All right, so I feel like we're in a really bad car show on TV where it's like, you gotta get it done. We don't have enough time. The auction's in two hours and we still need to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like uh, American Pickers, but I'm not Frankie. You're Frankie. <laughs> no, I'm a, tall, I'm a tall skinny guy that yeah. climbs over everything. But anyway, today is actually the last day to get your name on the car because Patreon charges in the beginning of the month, and the race is actually on the 19th already. We'll be in o Ocala, Florida. I don't know. The Want to Go Florida. Fast event <laughs> is on the 20th. The car show on the 19th, and the 24th. First, we will be at the Daytona Speedway, and the 22nd, we will be at Sebring. So, those are the tracks that we're running. Uh, Freddie's still getting us the details, so we'll figure out 
the exact times and stuff that will be there and we'll let you guys know if you guys want to meet us there wearing swag we'll still put your name on it the the car then go out and buy a hoodie anyway um lots more good stuff coming up thanks for watching keep your stick on the ice <laughs> <laughs> here we go <laughs> dip a choo